Hello there, James Swanick here, coming to you live from Brisbane, Australia. If you are just joining, will you go ahead and just type in the chat uh, box your name and which city and country you are in at the moment? So I'm just going to type in James in Brisbane, Australia. And on this particular call, we are going to be talking about the best sleep habits. We're talking about how do you get a great night's sleep? COVID-19 has hit. A lot of people are feeling stressed and overwhelmed. A lot of people are having trouble falling asleep. Some people are tossing and turning in the night. Some people are uh, waking up feeling irritable and tired and foggy. Anyone feel like that? If you feel like that, just go ahead and type in the comments there, me or yes, or put your hand up like that. And uh, and I will give you a shout out. So if you're just joining us, you just type in the live comments there uh, where you are watching from, uh, which city, which state, which country are you in? Um, and we are going to start this. Just uh, if anyone here doesn't know who I am, I am the founder of Swanic Sleep. This company here, I don't know why I'm holding this up here. I'm just trying to like showcase Swanick a few times. I'm rocking my Swanick shirt, obviously. Uh, and I'm going to be walking through the gold standard of sleep. Hello, Jimmy Vitalo in New York. Hello, Zach Murray in Wellington, New Zealand. Nice to see you guys. Welcome. Great to have you here. If you're all just joining, type in your name and which country or city you are watching from, and I'll give you a big shout out. Uh, Jimmy in New York, uh, what's your sleep like? Give me a rating of scale of one to 10. How would you rate your sleep? Zach in Wellington, New Zealand, how would you rate your sleep? Just type it in the comments down below. And let me know how you might rate it. And we'll get started here in about 30 seconds. We're going to be doing the gold standard of sleep. Some issues you may have is tossing and turning in the night. Jimmy says he rates his sleep at a four out of 10. Well, we're going to do some stuff today, which is going to get that up to about an eight out of 10. Um, maybe you uh, sleep eight hours. Maybe you have no problems falling asleep. You have no problems seemingly sleeping okay during the night, but you wake up in the morning, you still feel tired and you still feel foggy. Why would that be happening if you're sleeping eight hours? Well, we're going to talk about that. And uh, and if you're just joining us, just a reminder, just type in your name and your city and your country in the chats and uh, in the chat box below, and I'll give you a shout out, and then we're going to get started here. So the gold standard of sleep. So uh, let's start with what are the most common sleep destroyers? And then we're going to go into the gold standard um, of what you can do first thing in the morning to ensure that your sleep is infinitely better later on at night. So some common sleep destroyers, obviously, are stress and anxiety. When you are stressed and when you're anxious, uh, very, very challenging to get to sleep. Do you ever, like, lie in bed sometimes and you're like, this brain is going active. It's like thinking about the day, thinking, 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 and you just can't get to sleep. Hello, Kathleen in Mercer Island, Washington State, I think it is. Great to have you here. Uh, Jimmy says his sleep is a four out of 10. Kathleen, what is? how would you rate your sleep on a scale of one to 10? Jimmy, uh, sorry, Zach, how would you rate your sleep on a scale of one to 10? Just put the, the number down in there. And uh, when you're stressed and when you're anxious, very challenging to either fall asleep or very challenging to sleep deeply, um, very challenging to wake up feeling nice and refreshed in the morning. Zach says a 6 out of 10. So we've got a 4 out of 10, a 6 out of 10. Thanks, Zach. Uh, another common sleep destroyer is too much light at night. And you're probably thinking, what the heck are you talking about, James? When we expose ourselves to too much artificial light at nighttime, it compromises our sleep quality. Kathleen says a six out of 10. So we've got a four, a six, and a six. Uh, eating uh, within three hours of going to sleep has been shown to compromise our sleep 
quality. Being on our phones, um, exposing yourself to that artificial light from screens has been shown to compromise our sleep. Drinking alcohol in the last three hours before we go to sleep has been shown to compromise our sleep. Exercising too close to uh, bedtime has been shown to compromise our sleep. So we start to look at these sleep destroyers. We've got eating within three hours of going to sleep, drinking within three hours of going to sleep, exercising within three hours of going to sleep, exposing ourselves to too much light at night, which often is three hours before we, we go to sleep. If we plan on going to sleep at, say, 10 p.m., it's the middle of, the let's say, the Northern Hemisphere summer, the sun doesn't go down until about 7.30, 8 p.m., right, if there's, if there's daylight saving, then um, uh, exposing ourselves to too much artificial light in the last two or three hours before we go to sleep has been shown to compromise our sleep. So these are all sleep destroyers. We've got stress. We've got too much light at night. We've got eating within three hours of going to sleep, and we've got drinking within eight hours, uh, within eight hours of going to sleep. So if we remove those four, all of a sudden our sleep quality is going to improve. Who here who's watching right now, whether it's Jimmy, Zach, Kathleen, or anyone else watching who maybe hasn't um, shared yet, uh, who here is guilty of that? What are, you guilt what are you guilty of? Are you guilty of too much light at night? Are you guilty of eating within three hours of going to sleep? Are you guilty of drinking alcohol within three hours of going to sleep? Are you, <clears throat> excuse me, are you guilty of having uh, stress and anxiety in general? Just go ahead and type in, in the comments there and um, I'll read those out. I know that I am, um, I'm often guilty of eating uh, within that three hours of going to sleep. So although often I have best intentions of, of stopping eating at seven, if I plan to eat at 10, I tend to still have a little snack around eight or nine and I know I, I really shouldn't. So my sleep quality is going to be compromised. And you might be asking, well, why? How does that happen? Well, when you eat in the last three hours before you go to sleep, your body is trying to digest that food. And so your body is now working to digest that food um, instead of relaxing. And when it relaxes and when it's going into that restorative phase of sleep, then your body can, can sleep and can relax. But if you're drinking wine or beer or you're eating food, your body is now having to work. So it's true that a glass of wine, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, may in fact make you sleepy and help you to fall asleep. However, your sleep quality will be severely compromised as a result of that because now your liver is working to break down the toxins of the alcohol and now your body doesn't go into that deep restorative phase of sleep. Jimmy says drinking, stress, yeah. So Jimmy says that uh, he's guilty of drinking alcohol uh, within the last three hours of going to sleep and also having some stress, which also compromises our sleep. Kathleen says, I'm on my iPhone, so too much light. Yes, thank you for sharing, Jimmy. Thank you for sharing, Kathleen, too much light. Um, you may notice actually that I'm wearing a pair of um, glasses. These are blue light blocking glasses. Now, where I am at the moment in Brisbane, Australia, it's daytime. So I'm wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses from my, my company, Swanick, um, which is filtering out much of the blue light from the computer screen that I'm staring into right now. So I'm staring into the screen, right? A little mic, the little camera, and that blue light is hitting my eyes. And throughout the daytime, that is causing me fatigue and eye strain and a little bit of irritation and fogginess. So what I do to counter that is I wear a pair of these clear lensed blue light blocking glasses from Swanick. These we call these daytimes because there's a difference between wearing daytimes and nighttimes. And then uh, in a little bit, about Five, 10 minutes from now, I'm going to go over why you would wear the orange lens ones. And I'll give you a little clue. The orange lens ones is more to do with blocking that light at nighttime. We'll get to that. So let me put my daytime swannies back on. Uh, okay. So we know what a sleep destroyer is. Uh, also, another, sl another sleep destroyer is a lack of exercise. Um, they've done studies of people who and their sleep patterns that show that people who exercise regularly tend to sleep better. Uh, and I think that's because of a couple reasons. Um, one of which is people who exercise regularly um, tend to be healthier in general, and a healthy body 
tends to indicate more of a healthier mind, which tends to lead to a reduced stressed mind, which leads to falling asleep quicker, sleeping deeper and waking up feeling refreshed. So um, if you can exercise regularly, and it doesn't need to be like going to the gym and lifting weights and running half marathons and triathlons, it can be as simple as going for a walk out in nature in the morning. Um, it could be stretching, it could just be moving your body. That is enough, according to the studies, of uh, hundreds of thousands of people and dozens of studies over time tracking people's sleep patterns, that is enough for you to sleep better. So we know what are some sleep destroyers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the gold standard of sleep. So I'm going to share with you how to sleep better tonight by what you do first thing in the morning. So let's just assume that you're going to wake up at 6.30 in the morning and you're going to go to, you're going to, go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night. What do you do at 6.30 in the morning when you wake up? And what do you do at 10 o'clock at night when you switch off the light next to your bed and then you roll over and go to sleep? We're going to walk you through that. This is not just like, you know, my best tips. This is These are tips based on uh, hundreds of thousands of people uh, over decades being tracked for their sleep patterns. Okay, so what do you do to improve your sleep quality? Um, before we go on, you want to just get, type in a little comments down below. Um, one thing that you've learned so far, I know we've only been talking now 11 minutes, but what's one thing that you've learned so far about your sleep or what you may be doing wrong with your sleep or what you could be doing right with your sleep, even though we've only been going here about 11 minutes, just type it in there. So Zach, Kathleen, Jimmy, uh, Melanie, John, Kevin, whoever else is there, just type in the, uh, the comment there. What's one thing that you've learned already just before I go through the gold standard of sleep. We'll get to the nitty gritty because all people really want to know is how do I sleep better, right? So I'm going to give it to you based on thousands and thousands and thousands of people and dozens and dozens of studies showing how you can sleep much better tonight. And by the way, if you're a Swannies, uh, already a Swannies glasses wearer and a customer of ours, what what style of Swannies do you rock? Do you rock the daytimes? Do you rock the uh, the classic nighttimes? Do you rock a pair of the uh, the diamond nighttimes? Have you got a cool pair of uh, aviators? Do you wear do you wear our Swanic sunglasses? Which one do you represent? Which one should I wear? Actually, maybe I should. Should I look? Do I look like Stevie Wonder here, like wearing sunglasses during the daytime uh, indoors? I mean. Probably should just go back to rocking these ones or the daytime ones. <clears throat> All right, let's do the gold standard of sleep here. Okay, so one of the biggest things that you can do to improve your sleep tonight or tomorrow night, if it's already nighttime where you are, is to expose yourself to as much natural sunlight first thing in the morning. Our skin has receptors. On it and when the sunlight hits our skin it tells our body's internal clock which is named our circadian rhythm that it's daytime and when our body and our circadian rhythm understands that it's daytime it's going to start flooding our body with wake-up hormones with daytime hormones giving us energy and clarity and focus and then your body 16 hours later is going to want to naturally just shut down and go to sleep so excuse me so when you wake up at 6 30 in the morning even like maybe go to the bathroom really quickly, have a glass of water, but then really quickly within five or 10 minutes, go outside and stand in the sun and just let the sun hit your skin, even for just two or three minutes. If it's really, really cold and you're too scared to go out because you're going to be freezing, you know, I was going to use a little slang phrase there, but I, I'll hold back. Um, it's so cold that you don't want to go outside. Stand by a window. Like behind where I'm filming this now, there is a window. So just go and you wake up, stand by the window and let the sun come in and hit your head, hit your eyes, close your eyes, let the sun hit your skin. And what that's doing is telling your circadian rhythm, this is wake up time, which 16 hours later from then at nighttime is going to tell your body it's time to turn on the melatonin faucet. It's turn to just turn on the melatonin. So the biggest leverage point I have, I have discovered from studying the world's top sleep doctors and interviewing the world's top sleep experts is get as much natural light as possible first thing in the morning 
and block as much artificial light in the last hour or so before you go to sleep. And I'm going to get to that point in a little bit. Uh, Kathleen says, I know all of these hot tips and I'm using the quarantine as an excuse. By the way, 6.30 a.m. is the middle of my REM sleep. Oh, nice. <laughs> what time do you wake up? What time do you get out of bed, Kathleen? Amy says, hey, Amy from Virginia. Found you. Great to see you here, Amy. Would you write, rate your sleep quality out of 10? Just put a little number down below. Are you, do you sleep at a 6 out of 10, a 7 out of 10, an 8 out of 10? Uh, Amy from Virginia, if you let us know there. So number one tip was first thing in the morning, expose yourself to as much natural light as possible because that is going to help your body turn on the melatonin faucet later on at night. Okay, number two, studies have shown that if you exercise in the morning, your sleep quality and sleep duration increases. They think that exercising in the morning, that could mean like a gentle walk, it could mean going to the gym, it could mean doing a spin class, it could mean just like stretching, it could mean literally just a nice leisurely walk for 45 minutes in nature before lunchtime. But they've shown that people who exercise in the morning tend to sleep better. They think it's because people who exercise in the morning tend to exercise more regularly anyway because people who exercise in the morning don't have the excuse of the day getting in their way. People who exercise in the afternoon or evening, it's easy, it's easier for them to say, oh, actually, I'm not going to exercise today. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow because life gets in the way. Whereas people who exercise either first thing in the morning or mid-morning or late morning tend to do it with more regularity. Um, people who exercise more uh, are healthier, less stressed, less anxious in general, which leads to a better quality night's sleep. They also think it's because people who exercise closer to bedtime, it raises their core body temperature. And what we're going to learn very shortly is that we actually want a very cool body temperature for a great night's sleep. Okay, so hot tip or bumper. Here's the bumper sticker. Uh, morning exercise equals better sleep. I should probably type this down in the, uh, in the comments somewhere where I can. Uh, chat with her. Can I do this here? So hot tip, bumper stick, bumper. We're going to call this a bumper sticker. You can write this down as well. Bumper sticker. Morning exercise. Morning exercise. And you can put morning in capital letters. Morning exercise. You could even say morning movement, like morning exercise equals better sleep. Okay. Uh, and the first bumper sticker we had was morning sunlight, morning sunlight equals better sleep. Okay, so we've got two hot tips, two, two bumper stickers. Morning sunlight equals better sleep. Morning exercise equals better sleep. Um, okay, let's move on. So um, coffee, caffeine. I actually haven't, I hadn't drunk coffee for about four months until a couple of mornings ago where I started experimenting again and I went out and got myself a coffee down the road this morning, uh, black coffee. Um, the studies show that if you drink coffee, let's just say, sorry, let me backtrack. If you are planning to sleep at 10 p.m. at night, the studies show that if you drink coffee within eight hours, of bedtime, your sleep quality will be compromised, which means you want to have your last coffee eight hours before you intend to sleep. Uh, coffee uh, is a stimulant, caffeine is a stimulant, and that stimulant stays in your body for eight hours. Um, now, some people will be watching this and listening to this going, oh my goodness, what are you talking about? I have a coffee at night, I have a, a latte, a cappuccino as a dessert after dinner, and I fall asleep just fine. And the truth is that, well, sorry, that may be true that you fall asleep just fine, even having a coffee um, at nighttime, at dinner time. However, your sleep quality will be compromised. Because think about it, you go to sleep, okay, and yeah, maybe the coffee helps you fall asleep. Right, you fall asleep, but that stimulant is still that caffeine is still in your system. It is not enabling you to go into that deep restorative 
REM phase of sleep. And because that, because you don't ever get into that deep restorative REM phase of sleep, you wake up in the morning feeling tired and foggy, even if you've had eight hours, like even if you've just slept eight hours and you're like, wow, I slept eight hours, that's amazing. You get up and you're still like a little bit tired and foggy and lethargic. One of the chances it may be is because you had coffee at three o'clock in the afternoon or four o'clock in the afternoon or 6 p.m. in the afternoon. So where I am right now is 8.20 in the morning. So I'm having one coffee today because I've just started introducing it just slightly back into my routine. There is not one chance in hell that I'm going to be having coffee anytime in the afternoon. In fact, I always just made a rule for myself when I was drinking coffee regularly was just like coffee is only to be drunk before lunchtime or before 12 o'clock. Um, never after 12 p.m. So if 12 p.m. rolls around and I haven't had a coffee, I don't drink coffee that day. That's just a rule. It's like morning, done. Hello, Sonia. Great to see you here. Sonia says, mmm, so true. I like the mmm. Is it mmm? Is it like coffee? It's like mmm, so true. It was like mmm. What you're saying, James, is like a truth bomb. It's like a knowledge bomb. Which one is it? Um, and if you're just joining us, by the way, uh, go ahead and uh, type where you are watching from, which city, which country, which state, uh, and tell me what the temperature is there. Is it hot, cold, getting warmer? Is it raining? Is it sunshine? Go ahead and let me know. I'd like to. I'm in Brisbane at the moment. It's about 22, 20 degrees Celsius. I think the days are sunny, a few clouds in the sky. All right, let's move on. So the bumper sticker, and you can write this down as another thing. The bumper sticker is uh, no, no coffee after 2 p.m. If indeed you're going to go to sleep at 10 p.m. Now, if you're going to go to sleep at midnight, no coffee after 4 p.m. If you're going to go to sleep at 2 in the morning, no coffee after 6 p.m. Uh, I love this. Morning exercise equals better sleep. Morning sunlight equals better sleep. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, no coffee after 2 p.m. If you uh, no, actually let's do this, no coffee, no coffee within eight hours of sleep. There we go. That's the bumper sticker. Um, okay, let's keep going, shall we? So. We've got expose yourself to morning sunlight, first thing in the morning, morning exercise, no coffee within eight hours of going to sleep. I love it. Okay, so let's move now to uh, the nighttime. Now, like I said, I'm wearing these blue light blocking glasses from my company, Swanick. These are daytime glasses, okay? So I wear these glasses now. It's daytime here. It's 823 I'm using them to protect the blue light exposure that's coming out of my screen right now. However, at nighttime, as soon as the sun goes down, there is artificial light coming from this screen right now from my mobile phone right here. Okay, there's light beaming. Right? How many times are we doing this all day? We're looking into the phone like this. How many times are we doing this after the sun goes down? in the last couple of hours before we go to sleep. We're checking email, we're looking at Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're, we're sending text messages, we're sending WhatsApps, we're looking like this. Or we go on our computer and we're going on YouTube, or we're looking at the news, we're looking into the screen like this. Or, you know, we sit down at the end of the day and we turn on the TV and we watch a little bit of Netflix. Um, I watched a bit of Netflix last week, actually. There's a Ricky Gervais TV series called Afterlife, which I really enjoy. And I got into the habit of watching an episode as a, as a wind down for the night and I turn on the TV screen and I watch a 30 minute. Sometimes I watch two episodes in a row because I'm an addict and uh, I might watch for an hour. Now, if I was to be watching those screens or I was to be staring into my screen, my phone, or I was looking into my computer screen like this at nighttime and I was not protecting my eyes with a pair of blue light blocking glasses, then I know that my sleep quality is going to be severely compromised. And I'll explain why. I'll explain the, the science behind it. Um, artificial light from a screen like this or from a phone or from a TV screen at nighttime tricks our body, tricks our brain into believing that it is daytime. 
And when our body and brain believes that it's daytime, even though it's nighttime, the melatonin faucet does not get turned on. What's actually happening is that the light that's hitting my eyes right now is stimulating my pituitary and pineal glands. And now pituitary and pineal glands, when they're stimulated, they suppress melatonin production. So think of it, think of it this way. Every time you are exposed to artificial light at night, your body thinks it's daytime. Anytime you're exposed to artificial light at night, your body thinks it's daytime. And when your body thinks it's daytime, it stays active. It's suppressing melatonin. The melatonin that really wants to naturally flood your body because it's nighttime, it's time to go to sleep, just can't, it can't like be unleashed. Which is why we see so many people either trouble falling asleep or in the night they toss and turn, they move around, they change positions you know, 50 different times, or they wake up in the morning still feeling tired and refreshed. Um, hello, David. Happy you were part of the Lake Nota Institute. Nice to see you. Uh, hello, Lee. Lee Mani says, hi, James. Hello, everyone. Uh, David says, Orlando, Florida, 88 degrees and sunny, 6.22 p.m. Yes, I love it. Nice to have you here. Uh, so... Let me give you the gold standard. Um, it's not wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses, but I'm gonna give you the gold standard to protect yourself from artificial light at nighttime. Are you ready for this? This is huge. Get your pen, pens and paper ready. Uh, hello, Sean says, thank you. Love this. Watching in Buffalo, New York, 60 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny. Hello, Sean, great to see you. Uh, the absolute best thing that you can do to, to improve your sleep quality is to live your life at night by candlelight and to never use a light bulb or electronics or anything that involves electronic light again. That is the literally the best thing you can do for your sleep is to never, ever, ever turn on a light switch, watch a TV screen, live your life by any kind of electronic light ever again and to just light candles and live your life by candlelight because flame, natural flame does not, disrupt your melatonin production. It actually helps you sleep. Now, we live in 2020. Who here is going to live their life by candlelight and never ever live their life within artificial light again? I'm hearing crickets. No one's gonna do that, right? Because we've got the refrigerator light and the microwave light and we've got the TV screen light and we've got the overhead light. The whole world now lives in this artificial light. Okay, it's, it's staying. But have you ever gone camping? Have you ever gone camping and now you're using like a kerosene lantern or you're lighting things and you, 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 you get like the best night's sleep ever? Why is that? Why do you get the best night's sleep ever when you go camping? It's because you're not exposing yourself to this artificial light that tricks your body and brain into thinking that it's daytime. People who go camping always, oh, I slept so perfect. I slept beautifully. Of course you did because you had the little kerosene lantern and you were living your life by candlelight and you were sitting around the fire and natural flame does not disrupt melatonin production, but artificial light does. Artificial light from your microwave, refrigerator, the traffic lights, the bathroom light, the kitchen light, the, bar the bedroom, um, the bedside lamp light, the McDonald's golden arches as you're driving down the freeway, the... the um, the, the 7-Eleven lights, the alarm clock light, the lights behind me. Here, you see these little lights here? These are all artificial lights. Whoop, whoop, whoop. How do I do it that way? So none of us are going to live our life by candlelight all the time or even some of the time because we like our bathroom light and kitchen light and microwave light and our screens too much. So... How do we reduce the impact of that? Well, number one is wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses. Now, you'll notice that these have orange lenses. What is the opposite of blue? Orange. What's the opposite of orange? Blue. 
So the reason why blue light blocking glasses work is because the orange lens blocks out the artificial blue light that is shining right through this screen at the moment. If I go up close here, you can see the light bouncing off the lens. So the artificial light that is coming out of this computer screen that I'm staring into right now cannot penetrate this orange lens. And because that blue light cannot penetrate the orange lens and it deflects it, when we wear these glasses at nighttime, our body and our brain go, oh, yeah, it's nighttime. Cool. I'm going to turn on the melatonin faucet. And when the melatonin flows through the body, what happens? We start to get sleepy. It's like, oh, oh, oh. Our body is now in our natural cycle. Our body now naturally wants to prepare for sleep. So now we can watch Afterlife on Netflix on my phone while wearing a pair of glasses. I can watch it on my TV screen or on my computer screen as long as I'm wearing the blue light blocking glasses. I can watch Afterlife on Netflix or old Tiger King or whatever that hot show is on Netflix at the moment. Or if you're into sport, there's the, the Last Dance, the story of Michael Jordan. You can watch your favorite TV show while wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses, safe in the knowledge that none of that blue light from the screen is getting through. Here's what you don't want to do. What you don't want to do is wear these glasses, block the blue light, watch your TV show, and then go, oh, time to go to sleep. And then you take the glasses off, you go into the bathroom, you put the toothpaste on your, on your, on your um, toothbrush, and you start brushing your teeth. Because what have you done? Now you've exposed your eyes to the bathroom light. And now that bathroom light, which is hitting your eyes, is now going, oh, it's daytime again. It's daytime. Your body's going, oh, it's daytime. I'm being exposed to light. My pituitary and pineal glands are being stimulated. Daytime. Time to start suppressing the melatonin production again. Start to like just pushing it down, pushing it down. And now all we're doing is signing up for a night of mediocre sleep. So instead, when you put the glasses on, you want to keep them on, right? Keep them on while watching a TV show on Netflix, while looking at your screen, while brushing your teeth, when you crawl into bed, because I know everyone's crawling into bed with their phone, or at least many people are. And yeah, you can lie in the dark at 10 o'clock and look at your phone and shut down if you want. I mean, I'm going to encourage you not to, but I know that you're an addict because I'm an addict. And I often do it, guilty, but I'm wearing these blue light blocking glasses. And so now that screen light is not stimulating my pituitary and pineal gland. So I can scroll through confidently that my body's still preparing for sleep and that the melatonin faucet is still turned on. And then only when I turn the, the phone off or I turn the bedside lamp off, do I remove the glasses and roll over and go to sleep. So one way, like I said, is to wear a pair of blue light blocking glasses. These are the classics from Swanick. Pretty cool. These are the diamonds. And these are nighttime ones. And these are the daytime ones. Now, any questions about the difference between the clear lens and the uh, orange lens? So the clear lens will not help you sleep at nighttime. These are for daytime use only. You must have an orange lens, a deep, deep, deep orange lens in order for you to block um, enough of the blue light that is responsible for disrupting your sleep. Um, so now I'm going to I'm, I'm going to pretend that it's nighttime. I'm just going to give these a little bit of a clean. I realize that the, I didn't really clean them very well. Let me put these ones on. Um, so let's pretend that it's nighttime. What else can you do to ensure that you have a great night's sleep? Uh, if you uh, have an iPhone, there is a setting which I'll show you right now called night shift. So if you go into if you go into settings and we go into display and actually hang on, yeah, we go into display and brightness. Okay, so I'll start again just to show you. So if we're in uh, settings. Display and brightness, you'll see that there's a little thing there that says night shift. You see that? And when you click on night shift, see how the screen goes orange and not as orange? You can you can set this timer 
so that when the sun goes down in your time zone, your screen will naturally and automatically, without you even having to manually change anything, will start to go orange in color. And why? what that's doing is it's actually reducing the blue light exposure of your phone. Uh, Amy says, do these fit over prescription glasses? Yes, we have a pair of um, fit over glasses. In fact, shall I get them? Let me just grab a pair. Uh, I'll show you the, the fit over pair, one second. Stand corrected. I don't have a pair of fitovers here, I don't think, or do I? But yeah, we have a pair of fitovers that go over the top of prescription glasses. I thought it might be in one of these ones, but it's but they're not. Uh, I don't have a pair of fitovers with me. But Amy, yeah, we have a pair of glasses that are that are named fitovers. And if you're wearing your prescription glasses, you put these glasses over the top. There we go. We just put the the link there in the URL. Um. So going back to um, Night Shift. Now, if you have an Android phone, you can use the setting called Twilight. Okay, so Twilight. So to reduce the blue light exposure that is disrupting your sleep on an iPhone, just to go over this one more time, we want to go into the, um, the settings. Uh, whoops, hang on. Yeah, display and brightness. So display and brightness. And we want to turn on night shift. And then at night time, the screen will start to go an amber to orange kind of color, which means it's reducing the blue light exposure. And then on an Android phone, you want to use the setting, which is named Twilight. Um, OK, who's got a, who wants to tell me what they've learned so far from this? What's one big kind of bumper sticker point that they've learned? Just go ahead and type that in uh the uh comments below and i'll give you a shout out uh i know we've got uh amy and sean and david and lee and uh sonia and amy and kathleen and jimmy and zach and we've got people in new york new zealand new york new zealand mercer island uh virginia uh orlando florida uh, Buffalo, New York. Uh, yeah, I love it. Uh, okay. Uh, Amy's asking day and night. Yeah, so the daytime, yes, fitovers go over the daytime and the nighttime. So just to be clear, these are daytime, which is really great for computer use throughout the day to actually give you energy and clarity and focus and to make sure that you don't get foggy and irritated throughout the day. And then at nighttime, we put on these nighttime ones with the orange lens and rock these bad boys. And you know, if you want to go out and be cool, like the Blues Brothers as a pair of sunglasses, you can always wear a pair of the Swannies, the Swannies uh, sunglasses as well. Um, okay, what else can we do? Um, if you have a computer screen and you're using computer screens at nighttime, there's a, an app called Flux, F period L U X. And F L U X, F. Full stop L-U-X, F period L-U-X. If you go to justgetflux.com, justgetflux.com, the same thing you can do on your uh, computer screen, which is you can reduce the blue light exposure. So if it's 7 o'clock in, in your time zone at nighttime and um, your screen will start to go an amber color, start to go an orange color as it starts to strip away that artificial blue light. Because pe everyone knows that the artificial blue light messes with your melatonin production. So uh, uh, Flux, so justgetflux.com, justgetflux.com. Um, you'll be able to download that for free. Um, and at 7 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock at night, depending on what your time zone is and when the sun goes down, your screen will naturally start to go an amber-orange color, which means it's working. It's reducing the blue light exposure. Amy says, natural light. In AM, decrease artificial light at night. Get fitovers for day and night. Clever. I love it. Good job, Amy. Uh, okay. Now, we've got some more things here. Um, 
what is the best temperature? Who can who can give me their best guess <coughs> as to what's the best temperature to sleep in? They've done all these studies that show that there is a range, Fahrenheit range, of um, how you should sleep, the best sleep temperature ever. Who wants to have a guess? Is it 65 degrees, 70 degrees, 75 degrees? Is it 80? Just go ahead and type in right down below and let me know. Amy Olson says 68 degrees. Who else wants to have a little bet there? Just type in what you think is the optimal temperature for sleep. Do you think it's 70, 65, 90? Do you think it's like 100 degrees? Is it 50 degrees and like you're freezing, you're kind of like rugging up going, ah. Zach Murray says 16 to 18 degrees Celsius. These are good, these are good tests. Facebook user says 58 degrees. Okay, so we've got 58 degrees Fahrenheit. What's actually, let's work out what 16 to 18 degrees Celsius is in Fahrenheit, shall we? Let's do 17 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit is 62 degrees. Okay, great. So 62 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, all right. So everyone here gets a gold star because everyone here is pretty right for the most part. Uh, the correct answer is anywhere between 65, 68, 69 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in that um, range, studies have shown is the optimal for a great night's sleep. So somewhere between like 60, 67, 65, 64, 60, somewhere around there, 66, let's just say between 60 and 67 degrees. Cool, 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 cool. Not hot, not warm. So um, if you live in the cold and there's snow on the ground or it's freezing cold and it's um, uh, the summertime and you don't have an air conditioning unit, you want to sleep with the window open. If you live in the snow and it's freezing cold outside, you want to actually leave the window open a little bit to make sure that it's a cool environment, but then rug up with a really big, heavy blanket or duna, we call it in Australia, or duvet, comforter. It's okay to stay warm, right? It's okay to stay warm underneath a, like a big woolly um, blanket, but you want the environment itself to be cool. Anything above 68 degrees Fahrenheit, now your body's temperature is slightly warmer and now your ability to sleep um, optimally is starting to reduce, okay? So anywhere between 60, 67 degrees Fahrenheit for optimal sleep. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, summertime, if you've got an air conditioning unit, I have an air conditioning unit up here. A lot of them tell you, you know, what the temperature is. Um, you know, drop it down to 60 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit. It is cool, particularly for women. Uh, I know women have a, um, because they don't, they're not, don't have as much fat on them. There is much, you know, there's not as much to them as, as there is men. They get cooler a lot. If anyone ever has walked, if any man here has ever walked with a woman through a, um, a supermarket or shopping center where they're blasting the air conditioning, one of the things I often hear from women is like, oh, it's freezing in here. Or if you go to the movies uh, with female friends, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, it's freezing in here. Um, so women in particular, it's important when you go to sleep at night, yes, you still must keep it at 60 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, but just make sure that you rug up with a nice woolly blanket or a duvet or a um, duna, as we call it in Australia. John Lucas says, hi, can you say hello to my granddaughter who is called Cheka Pochia? Hola, Checha Pochia. I hope I've got to pronou uh, pronounce that correctly. I'm not sure I did. Checha Pochia or Checha Pochia? Hello, Gran Cazzo. <laughs> Hello to Marco's sister, Gran Cazzo or Gran Cazzo. I'm not sure the pronunciation. Great to have you here. All right, so let's uh, keep moving on to sleep. And if there's any questions here, um, go ahead and just type out your question right now and I'd be happy to answer that. But so far we have got, when you wake up in the morning, get as much natural sunlight as possible. No coffee within eight hours of going to sleep. Exercise in the morning. Block as much artificial light at nighttime by wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses. Of course I am biased, but I think Swannies from Swanick are the best glasses 
going. Um, sleep in a cool environment, 60 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Nice and cool, 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 cool. Uh, download Flux on your iPhone. Download, uh, um, I'm sorry, download f uh, um, uh, Night Shift on your iPhone, Twilight on your Android phone, and Flux on your computer. Um, okay, what else we got? Um, oh, okay, so light. Okay, we want to keep, even when we're sleeping, even after we've worn our swannies, blue our blocking glasses, and we've done a great job, and we've put them over and have gone to sleep, we also want to block as much um, sunlight from coming in first thing in the morning <clears throat> and light around the room. So if you have an alarm clock light that's on and it's blasting light, that blue light, even just hitting your skin, is enough to compromise your sleep just a little bit. So no neon lights from an alarm clock light, or you want to put some tape over it. If you have curtains, you want big, thick, heavy curtains. So when you wake up in the morning, it's not because the sunlight has come in. Because remember, when the sunlight comes in and it touches your skin, your body is going to start to wake up. So if you're wanting to sleep into, say, uh, eight, as Kathleen was sharing before, because Kathleen said that she woke up, she wakes up most mornings at, what time did you say, 8.30, um, you don't want the sunlight coming in at 6.30. Because the moment that that sunlight hits your skin, it's telling your body to wake up. And so now your body's getting out of that deep restorative phase of sleep and it's starting to wake up. So even if you sleep between 6.30 and 8.30, because the sunlight has been hitting your skin, your body is not sleeping as well as it might, which is why it's important to have really dark, thick, heavy curtains to block any of that sunlight from coming in in the morning. So that way you can wake up at whatever time you want to wake up without it having be because the sunlight's coming in and hitting you. Now, if you like to wake up with the sun cycle, great. You don't need the heavy heavy curtains. You can just, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to wake up, for example, if the sun gets up at 5.30 in the morning and you want to wake up at 5.30 in the morning, just don't have the curtains. Let the sunlight, natural sunlight start to wake you up. But if the sun gets up at 5.30 and you don't want to wake up until 8.30, because of your sleep circle cycle, because you don't go to sleep until 12.30 in the morning, then it's very important you have very dark, heavy curtains where light, <clears throat> excuse me, doesn't come through. Anyone ever stayed in a, in a hotel before and they have really dark, thick, heavy curtains? Especially like when I go to places like Las Vegas for business conferences, they have really big, thick, heavy curtains. None of that light gets through. Sometimes I wake up in the morning, I go, what time is it? I don't know whether it's like three in the morning or three in the afternoon. <laughs> um, uh, Lee says, I love my classic Swannies. Awesome. Thank you. Gianluca Teodoro. Um, okay. So, um, big, uh, so big, dark, heavy curtains. You don't want any of that light coming through, right? Blinds, but not like uh, white blinds or cream blinds, like black blinds. So, it's a lot more challenging for that light to come through. Um Okay, who's got some questions? Anyone got any questions they want to ask? Just throw in a um, question down below. <clears throat> and uh, if you've got a bumper sticker, which means like what's a big bumper sticker that you've got out of this so far? What's a bumper sticker? So one of the bumper stickers was um, morning light equals better sleep. Morning exercise equals better sleep. No caffeine after, uh, no caffeine within eight hours of sleeping equals better sleep. Blocking blue light at night equals better sleep. Uh, sleeping in a cool environment equals better sleep. Um, blocking the sunlight with heavy curtains equals better sleep. Reducing your stress and anxiety in general equals better sleep. Uh, who's got a who's got a um, who's got a uh, comment? Uh, Kathleen says, "How does sex support or not support better sleep?" Great question. I will get to that. Uh, in just a second, Amy says, use the pants hangers in hotel room closets to keep the blackout curtains sealed. Oh, that's great. I love that. Yeah, because sometimes like the curtains, it's very challenging sometimes, isn't it, to like keep them completely, completely sealed. Um, so Amy's suggesting using the pants hangers in a hotel room closet to keep the blackout curtain sealed. I love that. Great work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, a couple of other little bonus things. Well, not bonus things, but just a couple of other little sleep tips. 
I'm just going to give you the gold standard and I will also know that you're not going to do the gold standard because I know I don't do the gold standard even though I try to practice the gold standard. And that is just don't even be on your phone or watch TV or scroll through your phone at night time, you know, within a couple of hours of going to sleep. But I know no one's going to do it or very few people are going to do it because I'm pretty well, pretty self-disciplined and I still do it. <laughs> um, but, you know, if you really want to take it to the next level, and then obviously just switching off electronics, having like a rule that you don't check your phone anytime after 8 p.m., you don't watch TV after 9, et cetera, et cetera, can really um, be beneficial. The other thing is maybe you want to experiment with just living your life by candlelight. Why don't you just give it an experiment? Like go out and buy some candles, um, turn off all the lights in the house, light some candles, and, um, you know, experiment for a few nights and just see how your sleep is affected by um, living your life by candlelight. Be a great little experiment. Uh, Susan Gilpatrick says, use a hair clip on the curtains. I like that. I don't think that's going to work for me, Susan. Um, you know, I've tried to use hair clips, you know, my hair a lot of time. I just can't quite get it. It's a little bit short. Maybe I should let it grow out another week or so and then I'd be able to use it. What do you think? Uh, thank you for sharing that. <coughs> Where are you from, Susan? Where are you watching from? Are you in uh, which city, which country? Um, so Kathleen Carey uh, asked about how does sex support or not support better sleep? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to get a glass of water. <clears throat> All of this talking is um, uh, affecting my throat at the moment. I just need a glass of water. So just give me one second here. And while I'm going to get my glass of water, just type in, What's one uh, uh, one kind of like, whoa, I didn't know that kind of piece of knowledge that you've learned so far today? Susan says, now in Sarasota, Florida, awesome. So what's one piece of knowledge that you did not did not know before this call today? Type that in right now, and uh, I'll come back and I'll read them out just while I get a, a quick gulp of water. All righty. So, uh, so Car Kathleen was asking about sex. So, um, uh, prolactin is something like, let me just talk about this in terms of like, um, for men and women. So when, when, uh, men have, when a man ejaculates from sex, it releases, um, something called prolactin. And that has been shown to to help uh, men in particular fall asleep because a, a, a big release of, of of that of prolactin actually makes you sleepier and actually makes you kind of want to roll over and go to sleep. So not to get too graphic here because um, I want to keep this PG-13 in case there are kids watching, but um, it is a physiological fact that after sex, a, ma a man in particular will get sleepy and want to naturally fall fall asleep. We've all probably had jokes about this and um, it's been people laughed at it and, you know, oh, like the man who just wants to roll over and go to sleep. It's a thing. It's actually like a physiological thing um, because the release of all of that prolactin is actually makes men particularly sleepy. So um, doctor's orders have, have more sex and you'll sleep better. It is true. It's a physiological fact. Um, for women, I must admit, I'm not... Uh, as confident in my knowledge of why it helps uh, uh, women go to sleep in the moment, other than to say that if you have an active and healthy sex life, uh, you are probably not as stressed or not as anxious as you might be, which means your ability to be able to sleep well increases. Um, so uh, if anyone else has information on why it helps uh, women I can I understand why it helps men, but if anyone has any information as to why an active sex life may help women in general, I would love for you to share that with me. And um, thank you so much, Kathleen, for the question because uh, it's inspired me to dig a little deeper into how sex supports sleep in women. Uh, being a man, I know how it helps support men, uh, how it supports women, not as sure. 
so I would love for people, if people feel compelled to research it and let me know or even type it into the chat here, I'd be happy to read, uh, be happy to, to read that out uh, in, the, in the chat. Um, hope that was helpful. Um, who else has got a question here? Hello, Mary Ann Leary uh, says, what about blocking green light? Absolutely no idea. Mary Ann Leary, have absolutely no idea how to answer that question. Uh, let's do this, shall we? Blocking green light. Blocking green light. Let's have a look. Do green blocking glasses enhance? Use of green blocking glasses during the daytime for several hours might improve non-visual effects. Non-visual effects of white light increase by blocking the green color. Uh, green light, green light, green light. Mm, yeah. I've interviewed the world's top doctors. Um, world's top sleep experts, um, probably close to 50, 60, including Dr. Oz uh, from the Dr. Oz Show, uh, Dr. Michael Bruce, uh, one of the world's, probably America's top sleep doctor. Never once did they mention the word green light. So uh, I'm not saying that it doesn't compromise your sleep. I'm not saying that green light um, isn't an issue, but I can say that in interviewing probably 50 to 60 sleep experts or doctors, not one of them ever proactively mentioned the word green light. It was always blue light, blue light, blue light. Um, so uh, Kathleen says, in my experience, sex does help women. Yes, thank you for sharing, Kathleen. I would imagine that to be true. Susan says, I need the swannies, big time. Uh, Marianne says, I once lived by candlelight for a week, not camping. The first time I went into a grocery store with fluorescent lights, I couldn't sign the check as I had trouble writing. I had to leave the store. My body didn't like the artificial light. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Marianne Leary. Um, think about it. Our bodies aren't designed to be in artificial light. Our bodies are designed to be in sunlight and fire, firelight and the moonlight. That's it. But we humans have created this wonderful thing called artificial light. And uh, it's changed our bodies as a result of this. In fact, um, you know, artificial light's really only been around 120 years. I think it was the World Expo or, or the, the Expo Fair. I'm not sure what it was called, but uh, was, was it J.P. Morgan? I think it was J.P. Morgan's company um, which first lit up the, the, the fair back in the, like the turn of the century. There was a big competition between t um, Tesla um, and um, – no, no, sorry. I'm getting it mixed up here. It was um, – not Carnegie, that was Carnegie Steel. Who was it? It was, uh, who am I missing here? Um, Edison. Thank you, Edison. Uh, Thomas Edison and Tesla were fighting over who was going to light up the World's Fair uh, and turn on light for the first time. And once that happened, once the, um, you know, the whole world became exposed to this artificial light and Edison mass produced the, the light bulb, all of human history changed. All of human society changed. Up until that point, we were living our life by candlelight, right, at nighttime. And then as soon as the, the light bulb was mass produced at the turn of the century, then all of these health problems started to come in. It was great because we get to stay up at night light, but then all of these health-associated problems started, started to happen. Remember in the 50s and 60s, they started to mass produce these big kind of um, – corporate businesses and offices, all these lights coming down. And then in 2007, I think it was when the iPhone was created, now we're carrying around this portable sleep destroyer because we're just staring at this light all day. Computers in the 80s and 90s and 2000s, as people started to get more home computers, were staring into artificial light like this. Um, all of this disrupting disruptors to our sleep has been linked to obesity, uh, to stress, to anxiety, to cancer, um, because when we're not sleeping properly, our whole body goes into shock. Our body doesn't regulate. Our hormones are not in sync. Uh, our body doesn't burn as much fat, and we, we don't burn as much fat, and it's not regulated. It's not working the way nature intended it to work. We lose confidence in ourselves, and when we lose confidence in ourselves, we seek refuge in sugary foods or um, shopping or love addiction or bagels or donuts or sugary coffees as opposed to a black coffee. And we get into this vicious cycle and now we're reaching for a bottle of wine and we're having a glass of wine at night just to relax and take the stress off. 
And then our sleep becomes compromised because we had the wine, because we had the late night snack, because we're staring into the screens. And now because we're not sleeping particularly well, and we're like, uh, 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 we wake up in the morning and now we're feeling irritable. And because we're feeling irritable, we snap at our son or our daughter or our husband or our wife or our partner. Or we get up a little bit late and we kind of drive to work and then someone cuts us off in traffic and we get irritated at them. Or we're late to work and because we're irritable, we don't perform at work as as well as we could. And because we don't perform as well as we could, we don't get that promotion at work. And because we don't get that promotion at work, we feel disappointed. And so we go and seek refuge in a glass of wine or a sugary food. Or we stay up late at night, like trying to hustle to create this side business so we can get out of this job that we don't like. And now we're staying up late at night, staring into the screen. And now we're having a late night snack again. And we're watching a little bit of light TV just to kind of relax, but we're not but wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses and we're staring into screens again. And then we go to sleep and the whole vicious cycle starts again. So where in your life do you see you are compromising your sleep with just these little energy leaks, these little things that you're doing throughout the day that cumulatively is compromising your sleep. Go ahead and type in right now. What, what do you see that you now, having heard you know these sleep tips, which part of your day or what things are you doing during the day that you now realize have been compromising your sleep? Go ahead and type that down right now. It might be eating within three hours of, of bed. It might be um, drinking alcohol within three hours of bed. It might be drinking coffee. It might be not exercising in the morning. It might be staring into screens without wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses. It might be not having dark curtains. Um, Amy Olson says, nighttime blue light exposure. Yeah, that's huge. The two biggest things, in my opinion, um, biggest leverage points you can get for better sleep is exposing yourself to as much natural light in the morning and then blocking as much artificial light at night. If you only do those two things, you will see a noticeable improvement in your sleep, for sure. Now, having said that, doing that in addition to ensuring that you don't eat within three hours of sleep, not drinking, um, no caffeine within eight hours of sleep, exercising in the morning, living a life of um, reduced stress and anxiety in general is going to be a huge game changer. Um, We'll do one more thing on stress and anxiety. I'm just going to grab my uh, gratitude journal and I'll show you what I do to keep my stress and anxiety levels down. All righty. So I have a journal here and every um, morning when I wake up first thing, before I touch my phone, I will write down 20 things that I'm grateful for. And you can see here I have pages and pages of things that I'm grateful for that I write down and let me just grab this. Yeah. So pages here and pages here and I'll just start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, go all the way down from one to 20. And, um, you know, for example, I'll read you it's eight, it's nine Oh three in the morning. When I woke up this morning at six 30, I went and used the bathroom. I came back, I sat down in a little bean bag. I have, have here, I'll show you. I've got a little little bean bag over there, and uh, and I sit down and I write down twenty things I'm grateful for. And some of the things I wrote down was uh, walking along Burley Heads Beach yesterday, sitting in the morning sun by the beach, um, seeing what's possible, um, big open kitchen, uh, buying two big bean bags. I bought two big bean bags um, recently. Uh, providing for my family. I'm grateful for my friend Jason checking in on me with a text message yesterday. I'm grateful for my friend Charlie sending me a thank you text message. Charlie's a friend of mine. Her mother sadly died recently and I sent her a message uh, saying I was thinking of her and she sent me a, a text back about, well, it was yesterday. She sent me the text, but it was a good two weeks after I'd sent her the, the, the text. She finally te texted me yesterday and said, um, thank you so much for your message, which was really nice. So I said I'm grateful for the fact that Charlie sent me um, a thank you text message. You know, I don't mean like I'm grateful that she said thank you like she should have. I'm just saying I'm grateful that that we we connected, you know, <clears throat> that my my um, me passing on my best meant something to her. Um, I've got here, I'm grateful for my friends, including Kirk, Nick, Gina, Manon, Josephina, uh, AK, Sean, 
Uh, I'm grateful for making progress with my sales team in my um, alcohol business where I help people to quit alcohol. Um, I'm grateful for my top coach and his coaching ability. I'm grateful for feeling inspired uh, to coach all of my clients this week. Uh, I'm, I say I'm grateful for loving life, small pleasures, walks, coffee, meditation. I'm grateful for my body getting stronger and leaner. I'm grateful for stretching more and creating more flexibility. Uh, and I'm grateful for doing Mark's stretches for increased mobility. So there's just an example of a few things here that I personally write down that I'm grateful for, and all the studies show that when you live a life of appreciation versus expectation, your stress and anxiety is reduced, and your ability, ability to sleep better is increased. Now, I, do, I choose to do mine first thing in the morning, um, you can do it at night time or you can do some in the morning and some at night time. It's up to you. Just experiment with it. I wouldn't suggest that there is a right or wrong way to do it so long as you're doing it. A lot of people say, oh, it's, you know, the, the right way to be productive is to get up at five in the morning and work until nine or ten in the morning and then, re and then you, you relax. Well, I've tried that. Um, but then, you know, I, I love my mornings. I wake up in the morning. I do my daily 20 gratitude. I go for a walk in the sun. I kind of you know, just start to get into the day. I like to do morning exercise, obviously. And then I find my most productive hours of the day often, not always, but often can be very late at night, you know, like from 9 p.m. until 10 p.m., even if I'm going to sleep at 10. Even doing some work between 9 and 10 for me sometimes can be super productive and I still sleep flawlessly because when I'm doing that work, I'm wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses uh, I haven't eaten in the last three hours before sleep. I don't drink alcohol. I haven't drunk alcohol in 10 years plus now. And because I exercised in the morning and I was living a life of appreciation versus expectation because I have a cool temperature because I'm about to go to sleep with um, big, dark, heavy curtains. I had something else I was going to show you here. Um, because of all of that, uh, you know, I find that can be a productive time of day. Um Amy says, how do you increase natural light exposure in the morning, especially when it's crappy outside or you are trapped in a building or on an airplane? Uh, great question. Um, and Susan says, Amy, a light box is great. Yeah, there's a light, light box. In fact, Swanick, my company, we're about to very shortly release a, a good morning light, which will blast you in the morning just for those very circumstances, which kind of replicates the natural sunlight. Now, while you wait for that, if you, if you want to get started on that, there is a company called um, Panasonic, and they have a wake-up light. Uh, let's have a look here. Philips, uh, it's Philips, I'm sorry, Philips wake-up light. Um, yeah, Philips wake-up light. And uh, yeah, you wake up in the morning, you turn the light on, and it, and it kind of like mimics the sunrise. It has like a colored sun sunrise simulation to it. So that way, uh, if it's still dark outside and you're waking up before the sun gets up, you can blast yourself with this natural light and it's a good, um, you know, as good of a uh, substitute for the natural sunlight. So give that a try. Um, Swanick, my sleep company, is coming out with one, uh, I would say probably within a few months. So if you don't want to wait that long. Although having said that, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, the sun's getting up a lot earlier now anyway and it's going to increasingly get up earlier. So by the time winter comes around, we should have we should have that for you, uh, ready to go. Who else has got questions? Um, Marianne says um, research actually indicates that green light is not a significant factor when it comes to sleep interference. That's what I thought. Otherwise, I would know about it. We've been researching these studies, and the results indicate that green light is not a major factor in increasing alertness or performance, nor impacting sleepiness. And in fact, one study on mice shows that green light increased sleepiness. The studies also categorically indicate that when compared to green light, blue light is more effective, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Appreciate it. Um, uh, I know I just touched on alcohol, but um, Jean Lucas says, hi, I could say hi. Shay Coglioni from my granddaughter. Shay Coglioni. Hello. Um, 
alcohol. Alcohol is an absolute sleep destroyer. And you might say, well, I have a glass of wine. And it helps me fall asleep. It may help you fall asleep. But your, bot, your liver is going to have to then work throughout the night to break down the alcohol and the toxins. And that is going to mean that you're not in that deep REM restorative phase of sleep, which is going to compromise your sleep. No alcohol. Just give up alcohol up. It's rubbish. Or if you are going to drink, don't drink within three hours of going to sleep. So if you want to sleep at 10, have your last drink at 6.45, 7 p.m. But I just say don't drink at all. It's rubbish. Um, okay, what else have we got here? Who else has got a... Uh, who else has a question or a comment? What was, what was one big thing that you got out of today? Uh, any questions? Last, last minute questions. Thank you for some of the cool questions. Thanks, Jimmy and Zach and Kathleen and uh, uh, Amy and Sonia and David and Lee. And Sean uh, and Zach and Jean Luca and Marco and uh, Susan. Who else we got here? Uh, I love it. Yeah. So, uh, what was one big thing that you got out of this today? Um, so, I'm going to take these off because it's not nighttime where I am. I'm going to put my daytimes back on. There we go. Put my daytime Sony's back on. Oh, I know what I was going to talk to you about. Wearing a sleep mask. I don't know what I did with the sleep mask here. But we have this uh, award-winning 100% pure silk sleeping mask from Swanick Sleep, which blocks out a lot of that artificial blue light. Let me see if I can find it just before I go. found it so another great way for blocking light is to put on um, a sleeping mask and i don't mean one of those nasty ones that you get from like an airplane which is like cotton that digs into the side of your head i mean like 100 percent pure silk so this is a, a a silk sleep mask from swanick it actually won the uh, the world's best sleep mask in 2017 i think it was 2017 it's 100 percent pure silk and um studies show that silk in particular, keeps a lot of the moisture of your skin in. So ladies in particular, but also for men, but ladies I know are a little bit more more conscious of skin. Guys are kind of like, eh, whatever. Um, if you wear silk, like a silk sleep mask, this actually means that your skin will retain a lot of its moisture. So the silk helps retain the moisture in your skin, which means when you wake up in the morning, you have less visible wrinkles or crow's feet around the around the eyes because your skin has been pressed up against this lovely 100% pure silk, which restores or, or, or keeps a lot of your skin's moisture in. So, um, you know, a lot of people in general, when they wake up without wearing, you know, without sleeping with their, their face on silk, for example, like if you have a cotton pillow slip and you put your face on that, you wake up in the morning, you've got a lot of wrinkles and your skin's kind of like moving around. But if you're sleeping in on silk, a, sl a silk pillowcase, or you have a silk uh, eye mask like this, you can reduce the visible signs of wrinkles uh, in your skin because it's very healthy for your skin. So this is a, a deliberately oversized uh, sl sleeping mask. So this is uh, bigger than most uh, um, sleep masks. But you can see here that no light is getting through here, no light's getting through here, here, here. So I, it's completely black for me now. Okay, completely black. Likewise, I know a lot of women who have eyelashes, they don't like their eyelashes to get crushed um, as well. There's enough space here underneath where it gives you enough room where your eyelashes don't get crushed by the, by the silk. Um, and this is a great way of when you're going to sleep at night, ensuring that the sunlight or the brightness of the room doesn't wake you up before you want to wake up in the morning. Really, really comfortable. I wear this every single night. My routine at nighttime is I'll put my blue light blocking glasses on. I'll uh, watch TV or I'll, I'll be on my phone. I'll brush my teeth. Um, I'll uh, hop into bed and only then will I turn the bedside light off. So I don't like 
take these off and then turn the light off. I keep them on, turn the light off, remove them in the dark, and then I put this on like this. And then I'll roll over and I'll go to sleep and I'll know that, that the, the light in the room is not going to wake me up in the morning. Um, I have big, heavy black curtains anyway, but no light is coming in, even if it did get in. And uh, also when I wake up in the morning, I have less visible signs of wrinkles and crow's feet and things like that because my face has been exposed to this beautiful 100% pure silk um, throughout the night. Um, oh, noise. Yeah, I also like a light noise, ceiling fan and small air purifier. That's a great one. Yeah, air purifier is great. Um, and some background noise, like white noise or the sounds of waves crashing can be very calming as well. Um, yeah, the mask does come in different colors. Mel asks, um, yeah, we have, uh, we got, this is, I guess you say this is purple, but I'm confident we have blue and pink and a few other things as well. Um, but you can check that out. There's a whole range of them on our, on our, uh, website. Um, who else has got a question? Uh, or any of their own sleep tips. Susan, you seem like you have some good sleep tips. Do you want to add a, a, another couple sleep tip there? Uh, anyone else got a sleep tip? When we start to wrap this up, um, maybe take a photo. The other thing is maybe take a photo of me talking on the screen right now and share it on your social media and tag at Swanick uh, and at James Swanick, and I will repost you. So if you want to shout out, you want me to repost you or, or say hi to you on social media and you're on social media, <clears throat> If you're on Instagram, for example, why don't you take a photo, share it on your story or as a post, and then tag at Swanick and at um, uh, at James Swanick, and I will repost you or I'll like you or I'll give you a shout out. Um, but I hope this was helpful. Um, let's go over the gold standard one last time just before we go. Expose yourself to as much natural light as possible first thing in the morning. Um, exercise in the morning, no caffeine after 2 p.m. or within eight hours of going to sleep. Sleep in a cool environment, 65 to 68 or 60 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Block as much artificial blue light as night at night as you can with a pair of blue light blocking glasses. <clears throat> uh, no food, no alcohol within three hours of going to sleep. Big dark heavy curtains to block art, um, to block the natural sunlight that's coming in. Uh, you want to reduce your stress and anxiety anyway by doing calming meditations or journaling or just living a stress-free life in general. And, um, you know, Susan here is suggesting the Calm app with a 10-minute timer. Healing piano is a great thing to do. Uh, uh, burning some essential oils can be really nice as well. Um, you know, you get an oil diffuser. You might burn some, like, lavender or some some other things like that. Um you know, anything to really keep the um, uh, keep your stress levels down. Someone says, I use essential oils to ground me and help relax, but also to tell my brain that it's sleep time. Um, I love that. We have an oil diffuser, actually, at Swanick Sleep. Um, uh, so if you're looking for one there, something like an, an oil diffuser, um, let me just have a look on the shop here. Let's, let's see. Uh, shop, other sleep-related products. What do we got here? I'm just going to have a look. Here we go. We've got an aromatherapy diffuser. Um, uh, yeah, an aromatherapy diffuser. So we have those, and you can use those to diffuse oils. Um, also, we've got like a hypnotherapy for sleep. If you want to try a hypnotherapy, um, we've got a link there. If you just go to swanicsleep.com, and then also some earplugs. We've got some really cool sound blocking earplugs also, um, which you can try. Uh, Amy says, where to post photo again, please. So at Swanick, so on Instagram, at Swanick. And then for me personally, it's at James Swanick. Pretty easy. So just at Swanick and then at James Swanick uh, on Instagram. And then in Facebook, if you go into the Facebook uh, VIP, Swanick Sleep Facebook group, you can post the photo in there as well. Um, uh, and we'll give, you a little, we'll give you a little shout out. So if you go to... Um, uh, the Swanick Sleep VIP's Facebook page. Um, maybe Melanie, you could drop in the Swanick Sleep Facebook page there and just click there and then just maybe type out what was one thing that you got. You just say, hey, I was on the live call with James. I learned, bang. 
I will give you a shout out and a comment back and a little comment in there. All right. Good talk. There we go. I just put the link in there to the Facebook group. Thank you so much for joining. It was great to connect with you. Thank you, Jimmy, Zach, Kathleen, uh, Amy, Lee, David, Sean. Um, who else we got? Zach, Gianluca, Marco, Lee, Susan. Um, yeah. Facebook user. Not sure who that is. But um, so great to connect with you. I hope this helped. I hope you sleep so great tonight. Remember to um, go to Swanick Sleep VIP Facebook group for all cool little sleep tips. Sleep tips. Tag me at, at Swanick and at James Swanick. And I will uh, like and give you a big shout out there. And it was so wonderful to see you all here. I am going to press stop. Sleep well tonight. See you guys. <laughs>